Look at this. Far right. I love it. Far right. Isn't it a little bit overused though? You should come up with a new expression. Hyper right. Got into the Starship Enterprise with Picard and went to discover the new frontier of right-wing ideology. So to the right that he is shaking hands with Stalin from the other side of the horseshoe. I mean, come on, press. You need to diversify. Diversity is your strength. You can't just use far right over and over. It loses its meaning. Especially if Crowder is far right, how is Kanye West? Super, mega, right wing, extra, plus, plus, 2000, deluxe edition, right. <laughs> so there's a controversy going on, which uh, I don't even see where the controversy is at. Because I can understand both of the parties involved. On one hand, you have Steven Crowder. And he got a contract of $50 million to produce content for the Daily Wire. Now, he's not happy with the contract. He says that's not a lot of money. And of course, the average Joe looking at it and seeing $50 million, you're going to think, wow, how can you say no to that? That is a lot of money. But when you break it down and you actually realize it would be around $12 million per year, right? Because it's divided by four. Secondly, you have to pay taxes for that. Then, apparently, Steven Crowder has a team of 100 people, so you need to pay their wages. And you also need to pay taxes on top of those wages. And then you have all the tech and the equipment and everything that comes with that and the studio. Yeah, I would say that for his business, if he says that $50 million for the time period of four years is not enough, I kind of believe him. You know, Hassan Piker and H3H3, when they made their own studio, they paid around $3 million, according to H3H3. So it is a lot of money to run the type of operation that Crowder has. It's not fair to compare him with me, who I just have a little camera and a small desk and a microphone. Yeah, for me, $50 million would be a lot of money. I would probably retire. Like after doing the thing, I would be like, okay, I have enough money to live the rest of my life without any problem. I would just do YouTube for entertainment. So I, I do understand where he is coming from. If you hire people and you run an actual business out of making these videos, then you need more money. So the first complaint was the fact that it wasn't enough cash. The second complaint was about censorship because in the contract, it is stated that he will be deducted pay if he actually gets banned from any of these platforms. So if his videos get demonetized, if his videos get taken down. And he points out that, okay, well, the platform has its TOS set up based on far left ideology. So he basically cannot do his thing if he has to censor himself, right? So a lot of right wingers are on his side on this. And they say, yeah, like you shouldn't censor yourself. The reason Steven Crowder is popular among his supporters is the fact that he actually speaks freely and the fact that he wears his TOS violations like a badge. So I get where he is coming from, but I also understand where the Daily Wire is coming from. Like, if I were to spend money to hire someone on social media to make YouTube videos, right? And especially when you spend a lot of cash, like you spend $50 million in order to get this person aboard. Well, if they get banned from social media, then I just wasted my money. So... I understand their position where it's coming from. And it's not like, oh, they're bending to, to left-wing authority. No, like they want to put the content on social media to reach the people that are on those websites. But in order to do that, they have to play by the meta. And sure, you know, the meta is unfair, like not everyone likes it. But what can you do, right? They're not the ones setting the TOS at YouTube. And I think that without right-wingers on even these platforms then there would only be one voice. You'd only have the left that are trying to get people on their side. So unfortunately, it is what it is, right? Like if you want to um, broadcast on social media, you have to follow the TOS. Otherwise, you can just make a radio channel. And by the way, there's a lot of right-wing radio channels. Uh, there's right-wing televisions like um, Fox News and others. So there are ways around this. But like if you want to stream on YouTube, which is pretty much what the Daily Wire wanted Crowder to do in this contract, you have to follow the TOS. If you don't follow the TOS, you get banned. I mean, simple as, right? So I don't see where the controversy is at. I genuinely don't. Like, okay, Steven Crowder believes, rightfully so, that if he censors himself and he tries to follow a contract, which according to him is not well paid, it's going to actually lead to his subscribers leaving. 
Meanwhile, the Daily Wire wants to hire someone that can make videos on this platform. And if they get banned, then the, their money is wasted. Now, with that out of the way, you have individuals like this that are obfuscating the issue. And it's interesting that even his own subscribers are calling him out on this, which is quite rare. But he says that since Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire team are beefing over a $50 billion contract, now's a good time to remember that the spread of conservative propaganda online is almost entirely artificial. They're all getting paid to say the things that we know aren't true. So, first of all, the, the we, right? Uh, but, but first of all, it's the idea that all of right-wing ideology online is being moved by the Daily Wire and Steven Crowder, or they're even representative of conservatives as a whole. I mean, I don't get anything from the Daily Wire or Steven Crowder. Right? No one is paying me, but, but I guess in Vosh's imaginary La La Land... Um, there is no difference between a person with a studio and a staff and a person like myself that just sits at home, has a little desk and a microphone and absolutely no one to back him up. Then you also have to wonder, what about the Young Turks, right? Um, the Young Turks got, I believe it was $20 million from Qatar back in 2016, and I'm pretty sure they're getting funding from other places during covid the White House, they publicly stated that they have used money in order to get influencers to promote their agenda. Uh, wasn't there the the Royal Palace getting one bread tuber? I may be wrong, but wasn't it like philosophy something, something? That, did, didn't they pay money for that person to encourage lockdowns and stuff? I mean, the, the concept that this only happens with right-wingers is baffling. But this is what the left always does, right? Like, it accuses one side of doing something that everyone is doing, and when you point out that everyone is doing, they'll say, ah, but that's what about the rate? That's what about the rate? It's like, no, it's just normal, right? It's the way things work. People get paid for doing certain jobs. Now, if you think about it, a university professor, that's a left-wing university professor, and indoctrinates his students into a left-wing way of thought, he gets paid money. So is he indoctrinating students for the grift or is he indoctrinating students because he believes? I mean, the media does the same, right? The, the only difference is that there are people who genuinely believe in something and in order to spread the message, they require a studio, they require a team of staff. So then they are going to ask for money and financial support. And then there are people who are legitimately grifting. Right? And if you're legitimately grifting, then yeah, sure, you may not believe in the things that you are saying. And in that case, you may take money just to say certain things that you may not care about or may not believe in. And this is not necessarily political. You can see it on Twitch happening all the time. Apex Legends comes to mind. So Apex Legends was promoted by a lot of Twitch streamers who were being paid by the company to play the game, even though they didn't necessarily like it. At the moment the contract expired, they stopped playing the game. That is a grift, right? So they wouldn't have played that game by themselves, but because they were paid, they did it, and apparently the game became uh, a lot more famous due to that. And like, paying influencers is a thing that happens online. Now, how do you deal with this problem? Well, I do not get mind-controlled by Steven Crowder. If Steven Crowder tells me to jump in a well that's 500 feet deep. I don't jump in the well just because he told me, but I do know that a well exists that is 500 feet deep, right? So basically, I can watch someone and listen to the arguments even though I don't necessarily believe in them. Like, for example, you can be a right-winger and you can still listen to Destiny. That's not going to pull me to the left, but I can hear some of the arguments that he is making, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, like, the, the way he framed this is kind of interesting. That's how a normal person should behave. You should listen to left-wing and right-wing content and then make up your own mind. I know this is a concept that doesn't exist in modern society. Your mind. No, clearly we are just puppets being manipulated by whomever we watch. Right? Like when you turn on the computer and you go on the internet, you get to see a lot of snake cars from the Mowgli and they're all hypnotizing you and you have absolutely no mind or will of your own to uh, accept the premise by yourself. And you need to be spoon-fed the correct information, non-stop. Right? I, I don't mind if someone is grifting, for example. Because if they're making a good case, then they're making a good case, right? You can make a good case by being a grifter. Like, you may not necessarily believe in the thing, but you can play devil's advocate and you can actually make a really good case. 
Alternatively, you may believe in something, but you may be uneducated or not experienced in the subject, like Vosh is here, and then you can make a bad case. So at the end of the day, I don't care who the person in front of my camera is or who's paying them or whatever. I care about the arguments that they're putting forward. And I wonder, okay, do these arguments make logical sense? Are they true or aren't they? And then I think for myself, I don't, I don't need fact checkers. I don't need people to tell me this stuff. So anyway, uh, most leftist content creators make their living from donations and revenue, right? So like he's comparing people with studios and staff to random people. And, you know, if you want to talk about leftist content creators that are LARPing as socialists but have villas and manors and, and all these luxurious sports cars and shit, right? Like, if you want to really talk about the grift, like, do they really believe you need to eat the rich when they are rich themselves compared to the rest of the world? You want to talk about, like, some leftist activists, like uh, the controversy that some people from Black Lives Matter got caught in, right? Like, build large mansions, in, in mostly white predominant areas, right? Like rather than giving that money to help the minority communities and whatnot. And, and of course, I'm pretty sure Vosh would defend it. We'd be like, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, sure, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that if you're a capitalist, if you legitimately believe that greed is fine, right? And, and I, I remember watching the arguments. It's like, oh, well, of course they have a right to build a house. And I'm like, yeah, sure, they have the right to build a house, but like, why are they building a manor? I like, don't they believe in socialism? Like, there should be enough for everyone to go around. Well, how can there be enough for everyone to go around when you live in a fucking mansion? You live like Batman in the Bruce Wayne manner. Uh, they're paid well to be that stupid because billionaires who finance them use culture war nonsense to lure conservative voters in supporting... Con yeah, this is another thing, right? Like, the idea that everyone is happy. Like, ev everything is good in the world, Right? But because Steven Crowder comes up and talks about drag kids story hour, it upsets the parents. <laughs> like, you know, like, like th this is like the, the funniest thing that I see progressives do time and time again. For example, Islamophobia back uh, when it was at the peak. 2016, 2018 in the European Union, you had like a terrorist attack per week. Some were prohibited, some smaller, right? And the problem wasn't those. No, no, no. The, the problem was the people talking about them and complaining about them, right? That That's what was driving up Islamophobia. It wasn't the actual terrorists doing the shit. No, it, it was the people talking about it and bringing it up that was the problem. It, the noticers, right? Like the noticers. The war on noticing, right? So you're not allowed to notice. And of course, the, the noticers are being paid by some shadowy people. It's, it's not that they're concerned about the things that they're talking about. No, right? So this is the leftist worldview, right? Vosh's worldview. Everyone is happy. Everyone is satisfied. But some evil shadowy cabal of right-wingers are paying some influencers to talk about things that they normally wouldn't talk about just to upset the population. And then the population gets upset and votes right-wing. Clearly not a conspiracy theory. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.